Hey, everybody. I want to welcome you to this week's Business Insights with Matt Milley. And I'm super excited here because we're going to talk about some ways that you can bulletproof, recession-proof, and make your business, whether you're in the financial industry or whatever it is that you're in, I'm going to show you some ways that you can make your business recession-proof and I'm going to show you a very quick and easy way to do that. But before we get into the details, I'm going to cue my intro. Welcome to Business Insights with Matt Milia. I'm your host, Matt Milia. And in this podcast, we'll talk about the real, raw, uncut business success secrets you won't find anywhere else. Follow my journey from entry level to CEO. We discuss real actionable items you can plug into your business right away. To subscribe to our weekly top tips, you can go to www.mattpodcast.com and join our community of elite high-level performers. And if you're interested in our inside sales company, you can go to www.appointmentstoday.com to jump on a free strategy call. And now, stay tuned for our podcast. All right, all right. Hey, Chris, what's going on? What's happening, Matt? Good to see you, brother. You as well. I uh, First and foremost, I appreciate you jumping on. And uh, for everyone who's watching, why don't you give everybody just a little brief intro about uh, about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, kind of, you know, serial entrepreneur. Got into the real estate industry in 2005 when I got out of the Army. Um, really, you know, stuck around the real estate industry in a number of different fashions. I've built teams. I've built uh, independent brokerages. I've been recruited to national franchises to run some of their offices and run large teams around the country. I've uh, been a part of some of the you know top coaching programs in the real estate industry. Uh, about 2014, I started my own uh, coaching company, um, focused mostly in the sales space. Um, you know, I've, I've mostly been known for helping people build teams and work on sales scripts. Um, I've had a program called Script Ninja Coaching, helping realtors you know really master the art of uh, conversations and influence, um, and most recently have uh, added to our portfolio of businesses um, a solar division. I love that. I love yeah. that, and that's that's a lot of what I want to talk about today. Uh, the Script Ninjas, by the way, that's a Facebook group. Is that correct? It is. All right. So what I'm going to do here for. Uh, for everyone that's watching, I'm going to actually, I believe I'm also a part of that too, which is great. So I'm going to, I've been in there a few times before. I know you have a lot of great stuff in there. And plus, I've got to experience some of your great scripts working together. So, uh, you know, actually here, I'm going to share the, uh, throughout the call here, I'm going to find the actual, I will find our. Yeah, it's, uh, it's real estate market motivators script coaching. So we go. focus a lot on, you know, market conditions and how they shape our scripts, dialogues, conversations. Um, and that's a group that's open to everyone and anyone. Mortgage, real estate, like if you're in the sales industry, we look at the market and because we believe the market motivates what buyers, sellers, and investors do. So, um, yeah. I love it. I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going to put that here on the screen so that everybody can, uh, I'm also going to make sure too that we have it uh, put into our comments. But uh, Facebook group nine nine one eight zero two six. Well, we'll share the link in our comments. Yeah. But there's there's so much value there uh, to unpack, especially talking on scripting and and going over the flow of the calls. And it's interesting because originally when I reached out to you, I was very excited to see that you were a real estate coach, and I said, you know you're obviously one of the individuals that can help a company like mine that does inside sales really uh, facilitate conversations, talk with real estate agents, get in front of others. Because in a lot of cases, most agents, they don't necessarily know where to turn. And now, because of course, rates has, you know rates have gone up, you've got companies like Open Door coming in, uh, all these big box competitors. And not that Open Door is the biggest out of all of them, but you got all these companies that are coming in you know, give you cash offers, don't deal with a real estate agent. They try to bypass the agent altogether. And frankly, there's a lot of threats to the real estate industry, but something that you've done and you've pivoted is, lo is looked into power, uh, which is the, which is the solar provider that we've all uh, really gravitated towards. Would you mind sharing every with everyone a little bit about what was it that made you decide to even check them out in the first place? Yeah, let me, uh, let me take you back to 2006. I was on a journey 
of uh, traveling the country. It's when I first got started in real estate and I kind of fell into uh, working with investors, right? Like serious investors. And I didn't really know what the heck I was doing, to be honest with you. Um, and so I was like, you know what? I need to learn. I hate not knowing things. So I went on this journey of like just traveling the country. And um, I was in Arizona learning how to invest in um, small tin boxes that spit out cash, AKA mobile homes. And mm. I was at a Hilton uh, hotel and I was getting ready to check out. I was like, man, I, I want a Starbucks. I go online at the Starbucks and uh, literally right in front of me is Robert Kiyosaki and his wife, Kim Kiyosaki. And um, I started talking to him and we were talking briefly. Kim had you know, ordered their drinks. She got them and she's like, come on, Robert, we need to leave. And I said, Robert, one last question. Um, what advice? Now, mind you, I had just come out of the military, infantry officer, but I didn't know anything about sales investing. So it's a great opportunity to ask someone uh, with a lot of lot of knowledge. I said, what advice would yeah. you give a young aspiring entrepreneur? And he stopped and he looked at me. It was like he laser shot me in the eyes. And he said, understand this. Don't ever get involved in a business that does not have multiple streams of income. I said, interesting. Why is that? He said, because the second something shifts, that business is in pain. And by the time you realize it, it's too late. And he walked away. I was like, oh. wow. And mind you, that was 2006, right? So we're right. rolling in the real estate industry. Uh, 2008 rolls around and bam, man, punched in the face. I live here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. At the time, it was a lot of like second homes, uh, golf properties, that sort of thing. And, um, you know, people were just bailing on those properties, man. Like realtors were dropping like flies. Um, within like three and a half, four months, I woke up and I was $78,000 in corporate debt. And all my family and friends are telling me, Chris, just go back in the army. You were an officer. You got a, you know, a couple month old kid. You got to take care of her. I was like, no, man, I can't just do it. I can't do that. And then I thought to myself, Robert Kiyosaki, what would he have said? And, he, and, and that, that philosophy really spoke to me and I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to redefine this entire company. And I literally, that Monday morning, we had a, uh, we had a meeting with all my agents and I literally gave them a piece of paper. Um, and I said, look, you're either going to commit to what we're doing moving forward, or you can go take your license somewhere else. Um, and uh, most of them took me up on taking their license somewhere else. So here I am like getting close to hundred grand in debt. I've got three agents in my office and I got this great idea that I'm going to completely change the way uh, we're doing the business. Um, and we went after property management. We built it to where uh, we had four and then eventually five streams of income. And then in 18 months, uh, I paid off that corporate debt and my business started thriving from that point. And I knew right then and there, like Robert was right, never again will I do a business that does not have multiple streams of income. Um, so fast forward to, you know, here we are today. Uh, some of the conditions of the market look a little eerily similar to 2008, right? Um, right? And so the difference is we now have what I call an industry crunch, right? Where listing agents are paying agents less. We, like you said, open door. Um, there's a lot of competition for our commissions. And it's not that other people want them. They want to push the realtor out of the business. So not only are commissions shrinking, the threat to the real estate agent's existence is a very real and present danger, right? Um, and then on top of that, the industry itself is moving towards uh, where buyer agents are going to have to literally ask their buyer clients to pay them a commission. There's a major lawsuit out there right now. So there's a lot going on in the real estate industry that I think a lot of people don't have their eyes open to. And um, I was thinking about putting solar on my, on my house because I live here in South Carolina. They clear cut trees, they build houses, and then the sun hangs out over the house 10 hours a day and just fries it. So right. I thought to myself, like, why don't I put solar on my roof, right? Um, long story short, a friend I posted on Facebook. A friend called me up. He's like, hey, man, what, what's the deal about solar? And I told him why. And he goes, man, somebody introduced this company to me. Um, I'm considering it, but I want, you know, you've been my business coach before. He said, do me a favor, take a look at it and tell me what you think. And I looked at it and I called him back up a few minutes later. I said, dude, this is the EXP of solar. Yeah. Why is that? Because they literally took EXP's model back in 2019 and they implemented it, which is what, right? Like, you know, best commissions in the industry, uh, revenue, revenue share, stock option ownership, like multiple streams 
of income. And I'm looking at the solar industry and I started doing some research and statistics like in the next three years, 20% um, of homes will adopt uh, solar, right? Uh, energy grid is antiquated, 150 years old. It's too expensive for the government to upgrade. Uh, Green New Deal, electric vehicles are going to put a massive demand on the solar grid. Rolling blackouts in, um, in, in Texas. California is mandating homes if they remodel or, or rebuild or build. They have to have solar on it. 12, 12 uh, states are adopting in the next eight years that you, they will not sell combustion vehicles anymore. The industry is trending, right? Whereas the real estate industry is compressing. Uh, some people like to paint it a pretty color and call it recalibrating. Uh, I call it compressing. So right. I saw an opportunity in an industry with a company that adopted some a real estate industry's model, a financial model, and it you know skyrocketed them and it, and it attracted some of the highest talent. Whatever you believe about the company doesn't matter. They became the fastest growing real estate company in three years, right? And then this solar company does the same thing, and it goes from Inc. 5000's um, private or fastest growing private companies, number 938 to 61 in two and a half years. So all those things together, I look at it, I'm like, that's an opportunity, all right? That's an opportunity. This thing's got five streams of income. So I'm like, it's a no brainer. So that's kind of how I got into it. Chris, I'm, I'm going to ask you some of the tough questions. Some of the yeah, questions sure. that, um, some of the questions that some people that even myself, if someone were to ask me, I'd be like, I don't know. Um, so looking at solar, let's talk a little bit about that. We've got, you've got all these companies that are out there, all these different ones to choose from. Now I'm talking specifically from the consumer standpoint, okay? So as a consumer, you've got all these different companies, then you've got power. Now, from what I know about power, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, which I think that this in itself is the game changer. A lot of times, like price per panel, for example, obviously, uh, the person that's selling the product, they get it, they can mark it up, whatever the case may be. But then the company keeps a majority of that profit, where with us, we're able to really price it very competitively so that we can essentially outprice or put ourselves in a better position. Have you have you seen that as far as apples to apples comparisons goes? Yeah, absolutely. It was part of my research that I did because um, I have Vivint Home Security. Um, and mm -hmm. they approached us about, they're the ones that really opened my eyes to solar. Um, and I asked them to give me a proposal and the interesting part was they wanted to do this presentation. I'm like, dude, I believe in solar. You don't need to do any presentation. Just send me the numbers. If they work, we'll move forward. If they don't, we won't. Right. Right. Um, and they wouldn't send me the numbers. So that's why I went looking for something else. And fortunately um, it led me to the company power and in doing my um, homework, what I found is in the industry of, of solar, there's a label called uh, Redline. Right. And Redline's nothing more than what is the total cost of goods for this project. And it, get me it gets measured in um, dollar per kilowatt. OK. And so in the industry, everybody's like, what's your red line? What's your red line? Um, long story short, it, it encompasses everything. And mm. what I have found is because of their model, they buy their their philosophy is um, we deliver the best equipment with the best labor at the best prices with the best experience. Right, that grabs your attention. I start digging into it. They've got the best prices, right? Like nobody's been able to compete with their red line. Right. right? Why is that? They buy in bulk. When other companies mm -hmm. are and they're having supply chain issues, this company spent almost $20 million on, uh, on inventory during a supply shortage. And because we bought it in bulk at times before uh, uh, supplies became scarce, we got it at dirt cheap prices. So what our price per panel is and someone else's today's price, per they can't match, right? So that. looking at the big piece, there's like three or four real fundamental areas about the solar industry that people clearly don't know about that I found is probably the most important when proposing solar to someone. Um, it's price, right? At the end of the day, everything's about price. Um, warranty, right? Uh, this company's got 30-year bumper-to-bumper warranty. Right. Very few nice. companies can offer that. They'll offer 25 years on this, 10 on that. We won't cover this. This is bumper to bumper. Even intrusion, right? So God forbid something happens with your roof, water intrusion from labor and installation. Uh, I'm in Myrtle Beach. If a hurricane comes and blows them off, they'll cover them. If they break them, 30-year bumper to bumper. So people are covered in that respect, okay? Um, wow. 
Yeah. So you got price, you've got warranty, um, and then you know you you've got deliverables, right? You have to you have to deliver on it. Um, and this company is a company that got really smart. And one of the biggest challenges, I also have a uh, home maintenance business that I've operated since way back when I started my property management company. The biggest challenge for all of us is labor. You can't get people to show up. Restaurants, yeah. but the home improvement, the, the construction industry, nobody wants to work for some reason. I don't know where everybody's making money, but point of the matter is um, they have went and you know, uh, created contracts and agreements with some of the largest uh, professional solar installation companies in each and every state. Uh, so we don't have that problem. So when other companies are having supply chain issues, price challenges, deliverables, um, and installations, this company is just moseying along, man. So yeah, I mean, it's you, when, when you look into all the details and you compare apple to apples, and I'm not saying this because, you know, this is a company I aligned with. I'm saying this because I aligned with this company because of those things. And I think that's a huge differentiator because no matter how you look at it, I mean, you're right. I, I can't tell you how many times that I've had. And, and so before I even joined you, I had so many times where people would come to my door you know, knock and offer in solar. And I'm like, I'm not interested. I'm not looking at that. Not interested in that. And a lot of it was because of preconceived notions from solar is a ripoff. That's what people would say. Solar is a ripoff. They're going to tell you that you're going to save money, but then you spend more and then you end up losing everything. And, you know, they're going to tell you that you're going to make all this money and the electric company pays you. And I'm like, well, a lot of that is just old school, outdated stuff. You went solar. Let's talk about that. I'm going to get a little personal for a moment, if that's okay. Yeah, I'm an what, brother. What were you paying before for your electric bill? Um, so I was averaging about 240 bucks a month, okay? Um, okay. Now, my home uh, has electric and gas. So my mm. electric uh, my electric bill is not as high as you know, maybe some people's is. Yeah. Uh, because some of my appliances are ran by gas. Uh, but my average bill was $240 and um, my solar system, it's not on my roof just yet. We're waiting for our county permits to get approved and then it's, you know, it's get glass slapped on the roof. Uh, but right now, my solar system, I have 117% offset, which means 100% of what I was consuming in a, a, a average year, 17% more. Okay. Mm. Um, I'm paying $196 a month, which may not sound like a whole lot of savings. Like Chris, that's like $44 a month. Well, that's good. I've got a battery backup system, right? So if the electric grid goes out, if a hurricane comes and the electric grid's got to go out, my house is still powering for $44 less than what the electric company was charging me based off of my average consumption. And the big piece is, I'll never pay more than $196 a month, right? That's, so, yep. You know, what I tell people is when they're like, oh, solar's ridiculous, right? They give it this label, it's ridiculous because of these preconceived uh, notions, which some of them are true. Like, I'm not going to lie. Some of them are true because just like any sales industry, there's some unethical people, right? Oh, of course. That represent yeah. real estate, you know, insurance, mortgages, et cetera. It's, it's everywhere. So you got to do your due diligence. And what I recommend to people is if you are interested in solar, don't just do it with some knucklehead that knocks on your door. Do it with someone that is reputable, that you know. Ask, like, do your homework, right? Give multiple bids. You want a bid? I'll give you a free, you know, free audit analysis and show me how much I can save you. So my point here is what I tell people is ridiculous, is that I will challenge you, right? And anybody that watches this, I'll challenge, like, take me up on a challenge, $1,000. I'll write a $1,000 check to your name. You call your electric company and you say, hey, will you lower my electric costs by 40 and somewhat, you know, maybe even 50%? They'll laugh you off the phone. Right. If they say yes, then you say, okay, will you keep it that way for the next 25 years? And then after year 25, I don't pay anything. They'll probably laugh you off the phone at that point. But if they can't, or if they, if they don't laugh you off the phone and they still continue to talk to you, then you say, okay, will you give me priority that God forbid anything happens to my electricity, I am priority and I'm not going to pay a single dime nor deductible if anything were happened to the electric that powers my home. 
they, they won't say yes to any of those. But Matt, right. if you call me up and ask me the same question, I'd say, Matt, it's what I do every day. It's what right. my company does every day. So solar's not ridiculous. What's ridiculous is that we believe that the energy company or the utility companies, which is literally the last surviving monopoly in America, is charging us these things and we think it's okay. Right? There's another option. Yeah. That's an energy revolution. I want to I want to take you back to a time that well neither of us were born and hell probably even our parents weren't born uh, but going back to the early 1900s during the uh, where the automobile got introduced into the equation now can you imagine literally you got Henry Ford trying to sell his Model T one of the first one of the first cars out on the road and then you got these guys in horse and buggy People probably saw this car and they're like, oh, that's insane. That's crazy. That's a ripoff. Who wants that? I, I got my horse here. I got my buggy. We're good. I don't need to worry about anything like that. But again, it's it's that disruption and it's so disruptive. And it's one of those things where when I first looked at this model and when I first saw what it was that you guys were offering and then I had a couple people approach me about it and I was like, yeah, okay, okay. And then you and I talked and then I actually watched and saw and went to the Zoom meeting and saw everything that was being offered. They said, oh man, this is brilliant. And the crazy thing about it is that it's, it, it's not a lot to get started in this business. That's the first thing, because if you were, I mean, Chris, let's, let's break this down. Like, look, if you and I were to go start a solar company together, okay, we could call it Milia Heart Solar, Heart Milia Solar, whatever you want to do, all right? I'm open to that. We go start our own solar company. We go buy all the materials. We get the licensing. We then have to invest in the marketing and the foot traffic. We're talking tens of thousands, maybe even $100,000 to get that business started. Where else can you go and plug into a model that's already almost, it's pretty much done for you. You don't even have to get in your car to present this. In a lot of cases, they have the technology that virtually we can plug in a solar system. Now, granted, obviously, of course, someone has to go there and put it in, but virtually we can build this out for them and show and share what type of value they're getting. I mean, have you ever seen or heard of anything like that? I mean, obviously outside of, EXP or the real estate circle, but I've never seen that in this business. Well, you know, here's the thing. Uh, proven statistic is more solar companies, they don't just fail, they go bankrupt, okay? They go bankrupt, mm -hmm. which tells you what? Their expenses are significantly greater than their income such that they don't believe they can ever, um, you know, turn that boat around. And they're like, I can't pay it back. So it literally sinks not only the company, but the partners, the owners. That's, that's a bad model, right? Oh, um, yeah. Why is that? Because just like you said, like, we got to go out and buy all this equipment. You're out of business before you're ever in business, right? Now, I'm going to take you back to my uh, days of representing, you know, like certified investors in, in the real estate game. They spoke one word on most of the time. Chris, what's my cash on cash return? I remember the first time I said that, I'm like, what the hell is cash on cash return? I was like, let me, right. let me go calculate that. And I'm going back to my office before like, you know, iPhones and Google and that sort of thing. I'm like, that was cash on cash return. And cash on cash return is what's my cash in and then what's my cash out? So how much cash do I have to put into this transaction and how much am I going to get returned in a net manner at the end of the year? And then you calculate the percentage and that's when investors then evaluate whether or not it's good to put their money in that asset, the bank, which is never good, um, or, you know, Bitcoin or whatever, right? So they manage the percentages of cash on cash return. Uh, bro, you can't touch the cash on cash return in this industry. Right? Or in this business. Here's why. I'm going to be transparent. It's $99 to enroll to get your license. And it's just, you know, a, like the license part of the brand, not a real estate license. This is $99. Okay? And then it's $49 for you to have access to the most advanced technology that allows you to run a national uh, solar sales company where you can sell in 22 plus states and now Puerto Rico that's coming on board. Okay, So if you think about it, day one, you're going to pay 
We've got people on our on our uh, team right now that have aligned with us. In their first 30 days, they're earning 12 to $15,000 commissions. Like, do the math on that cash on cash return. And that's just one stream of income, right? That's just one stream of income. I'm not even going to talk about the revenue share or right. the mentoring program or, you know, so the earning potential on this is so substantial. Like we tell people this is real estate like commissions without the hassle of doing real estate. That's what this is. And a faster cash conversion cycle. Correct. Much faster yeah. because that's one of the biggest challenges. Even a company like mine with inside sales people, you know, they'll be like, we're, we're in it for a few months and they're seeing appointments and they're seeing opportunities and they might have a listing but the fastest someone's going to make money is as fast as the first deal can close. And sometimes yeah. it takes a couple months, three yeah. months, some four months. I mean, it's, it's just the way it goes. And with this, I mean, what, 30 days. I mean, it's not even, it's, not even, not even. Right? Okay. Like, we can get you in the money within days. It's crazy. Right? Just go out there, find five people and you tell them, you know, Hey, I can save you anywhere between 25 to 50% on your electric bill. I can do a free, no obligation, you know, audit for you and see how much we can save you if they're interested you know, you, you uh, send them the contracts and financing agreements via DocuSign. And once all documents are signed, they go to the company and they check over them. Within 48 hours, you get your first check up to $2,000 of your total commission. That's right? awesome. Imagine if that existed in real estate. There's a lot game, of game changer. Yeah. There's a lot of agents in real estate that I think really struggle because, you know, they're, they got to wait 60 days for their money and deals fall apart. And they just crush agents. They just crush oh, yeah. the spirit. So this True. is, you know, the, it, when you look at the financials element, right? Like, yeah, we're selling solar. Yeah, we're, you know, we're re rebuilding the future of America's energy production. Um, and, you know, we're saving the earth, right? Like the go green thing. Like if you look at that data uh, when people are like, oh, uh, climate change. It's a hope. No, it's real, man. It's real. And I'm not a typical tree hugger. Right. Like I have, I drive right. a, a V8 truck, a Ram 1500. I, you know, I got 27 gallons, spent a couple hundred bucks on gas a month. Um, so I'm not a tree hugger, but I can see things for what they are. And the reality is this is making a big difference. But ultimately, financially, like when you look to make business decisions at the end of the day, all that tree hugging and go green and, you know, save the world. That's cute. But what do the numbers look like? And you can't, yeah. you know, numbers don't lie. People do. And you can't argue with the numbers. No, you cannot. And I think that's the, that's really the biggest differentiator. And, and when you really sit down and you break this down, because a lot of people are like, oh, I've done the math on it. And, you know, there's a lot of things people don't think about. One, when you sell your house, that actually gives you a massive value add, which also you can transfer that agreement, I believe, with the sale of the house. Is that correct, Chris? Yeah. Let me run with that for a minute. Um, you know, I think some of the challenges that we have talking to real estate agents is because they've done one or two transactions um, with solar on the house and uh, it's been problematic. Right. Um, and I won't be judgmental about that, but real estate agents like to, you know, make things easy. And if it's not easy, they they kind of gripe about it. But the reality is this industry, like every other industry, has evolved. Right. Um, and back in the day, you know, 70s and 80s, the only way you can finance uh, a solar system on your house was you bought it cash or you got right. some equity or you know, maybe if credit cards were there were present at the time. But those were your only options. And then, you know, as the decades went on, they're like, all right, how do we make this more affordable? And so they came up with lease options. Right. Just like in the car industry, most realtors out there are leasing their, you know, bling bling cars anyway. And they'll gripe about solar leases. It's like, um, aren't you leasing your car? But the reality is if you lease a car for 39 months, you can't sell that car. And if you do, you have to accelerate all the payments. And that's the same thing that happened in solar. So that's why some realtors are having challenges with it. But what I tell people is that's the yesteryear's financing. Today, we've got financing companies that, I can't speak for the other companies. I'll just speak for mine. Uh, but we have, you know, four very reputable financing companies that have amazing products that I can go to a homeowner and say, you know, no money down as low as 1.99 percent or maybe even 1.49 percent financing. Right. Um, and 25 year amortization. And so and the, the cool part about it is if you go to go sell your house five, six, seven years from now, the buyers can assume the loan. 
Well, why would a buyer want to assume the loan? Uh, because they're going to either pay the electric bill at a higher right. rate that will continue to go up, or they'll pay for their that person's loan at a 1.49% interest rate, which I promise you guys will not be around very long. Because interest rates are continuing to go up, right? We're oh, recalibrating. Yeah. We're going back to the standard norm of 7.78 around there. Right? This is the direction that interest rates are going. So if somebody can come in and get this loan at 1.49%, assume it, and it's no at a cheaper rate that's fixed than what the electric company is going to charge them, it's a no-brainer. Totally. It's a no-brainer. So and that's a lot of people just aren't, a lot of people aren't always looking at that long term where, you know, because so many times people are like, I, I can't even tell me, oh, it's going to take me 10 years to break even on this. It's like, well, no, if you think about it, I mean, if you're covered 100%, if you've got, and of course, it's again, Chris, I mean, let's, it's not, if you're paying under $100 a month, $90 a month, it may not be a, a good fit yeah. for someone like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I don't even remember. I mean, I moved, so I'm in Florida. I moved in, so I moved in here in February, which was the coolest time of the year. I was here for two and a half weeks. My bill was still like 120 bucks because I got a pool in the back. Yeah. Uh, and that's like, that's by far, it's one of the coolest months of the year. And then March rolled around. I think I paid like 170 in March. And then, you know, I mean, I think my, my last bill just this month alone was like 397 or 398. I mean, it was, and that was with me trying to be conservative. Like, all right, I'm not going to crank my AC as much. And, you know, I'll put my filter down a little bit because now it's my second year here. I'm like, okay, I know what to what not to do uh, so that I don't run my electricity through the roof and still you know, almost a $400 electric bill. So, I mean, it's, it's really a no brainer. It yeah. really is. You know, it's, it's funny. I have a, um, I have a real estate agent that's on our team. She's, you know her, she's, she's been one of your clients um, and she's out in Texas and she's, you know, a baller real estate agent. And um, man, she made such an awesome post on Facebook about, Hey, uh, and you know, I think the local area, uh, she asked mm -hmm. her neighbors, um, Hey, is anybody else experiencing, um, higher than normal electric bills? I'm seeing a lot of that on my newsfeed and there well, I'm looking at this thing last night and I'm scrolling and it was insane, Matt. People were, there was like 40 to 50 comments, people going, oh my goodness, my bill went from 285 to 490, from four to 600, uh, five to 800. I'm going, holy smokes, holy smokes, right? Like, yeah, guess what? It is because Texas is having insane heat, but if that same solar system that has a fixed rate, you're not, a, those people in Texas, which is one of our fastest growing markets, go figure, right? Uh, they're not complaining like that. They're not saying, oh, my solar system just went more. No, it doesn't work like that. Right. Right. So, um, you know, climate change, climate change is real guys. Like summers are going to get hotter. There's going to be periods of time. Somebody said the other day, I thought it was real interesting. I was on a, um, uh, like a, a like a macro markets conversation, and they said that the desert is moving west. The desert of California, excuse me, east. The desert of California is moving east, and you're starting wow. to see the desert conditions make their way east of Arizona into Texas, and then eventually, uh, and that's that's all due to climate change. And so, again, whatever you believe about climate change, that's your belief system. I'm not here to argue that. Uh, but you can't argue with the fact that it's 110 degrees in Texas right now and has been for like three weeks. And you can't argue with the fact that people are paying $685 a month electric bills. People have options now. That's what they need to hear. You have an option. Last month was like the first time in, in Safety Harbor, which is where I'm at, it got to 100 degrees. And it was the first time in years that it got that hot. And I mean, 100 degrees here in Florida, it's funny because – you know, I mean, granted, Arizona, Arizona's hot, but they don't get the same humidity. Right. When you get like 100 degrees and you got like 90% humidity, that feels like 115. I mean, it's, yeah, it's oh, horrendous. So, it. you know, it's just, it's a totally different, you're, you're literally living indoors practically. So point being is that, I, yeah, I'm with you 100%. And guys, for everyone that's watching and tuning in, uh, 
you know, again, if you guys want some help with your, if you guys want some help with your scripts and you want some help with, uh, you know, just some motivation, this is real estate marketing motivator script coaching. You could type that into Facebook. See, Chris, I was a little bit smarter this time. I didn't put that crazy long 216. I, I thought that was going to be a cool little link. Yeah, yeah, guys, this is the easier way to get to it. Go here, real estate market motivator script coaching. You want to talk about solar, reach out to Chris, reach out to myself. Uh, we'd love to uh, sit down and put together a solution for you. Uh, Chris, anything before we close things out? Was there anything that you wanted to add that we uh, that we didn't touch on? No, you know, what I would say is um, for any homeowner out there, right, like outside the business end, um, here's what I've learned. Your decisions determine your destiny, right? And those decisions are made by the options that you have. The fact of the matter is the utility companies, which is why it's on the monopoly game board, um, have been a monopoly for so long building governments and you know wealthy investors' investment portfolios for a long time. You have options now. Explore them. Whether you want to look at you know a, a representative like myself or you, Matt, in the company power or another representative or even another company, get everyone offers a free energy audit. Like take take advantage of it. See how much you can save and weigh your options. If it's not right for you, it's not right for you. That's cool. We're not here to say it's right for everyone because it's it's clearly not. Um, as far as salespeople out there, because I know you work with a lot of them, right? Like I, I was introduced to you um, or I was introduced about you a while ago to people. And then when you hit me up, I was like, I got I to gotta talk to this guy. Um, and then in being in relationship with you, we've got a lot of mutual friends through EXP, KW, and the real estate industry. So if you're watching this, here's what I would tell you. Um, you have a responsibility to your family and your business and those you serve to make smart financial decisions. Okay. Um, the wealthy, when they add, let's say Mark Cuban and those guys on Shark Tank, they don't <laughs> they don't look to buy into businesses because they have nothing else to do. They understand that the wealthy get rich through diversification and growing businesses to eat one of the easiest and fastest ways to do that. OK, um, so the rich use words like diversify and the not so rich use words like distraction and moonlighting your choice. And I'm not I'm not judging you in any way, uh, but if you want to add some diversification to your business, in an industry that's get naturally getting crunched, whether you like it or not. Okay. And everyone's bragging about doing more and more and more transactions. But the reality, if I looked at your P and L's, you're having to do more and more and more because you're making less and less and less. And you have to do more to make the same. Okay. If you want to add a business that is diversifying, that can add value to your clients, your past clients, your current clients and the buyer clients you're going to sit down with, that's going to give you a competitive edge in the marketplace. I implore you to look at this company. I really do. You know, 10, five figure commissions, five different ways that you can get paid. Um, and it generates some leverage for you um, that you can just use to grow and scale your business. So that's, you know, that's the advice that I have. And, you know, again, if it's not right for you, that's fine. No judgment. But I think you owe it to yourself. I really do. If you're in the real estate industry, if you're in the mortgage industry. Oh, big time. You owe it to yourself to look at this and determine whether or not it's right for you. And guys, not five figures over the lifetime, five figures a month. I mean, yeah. there are some, I mean, there are some people that can't, I mean, there are some people that literally can't even converse in, in English uh, that are making seven figures in yeah. this business. I mean, it's insane. And they're, and it's a business that you feel good about. Like literally you go to sleep at night knowing that you're doing right by the world. It's you're helping people. You're, you're lowering people's bills. You're helping them have a better quality of life. It's just, it's a really great business. It's a, not just a feel good business, but it's a great business. And it's a business that you're offering something that's so valuable. So Chris, thank you so much for coming on. You yeah, dropped a ton of value. And uh, for everyone else here who's watching, we'll see, see you same time, same channel next week. Thanks again, Chris. Thanks for having me, Matt. All right. See you, everybody. <laughs>